good morning good day everybody how are you all doing hope you are doing great today it's bright blue sky outside it's great here i'm sure you are doing great too so today we will finish our or complete our discussion on sampling and population etc we talked about how to collect a simple random sample how to do <clears throat> how to make sure that the experiment we do to find out the effect of an exploratory variable on a response variable, explanatory variable on a response variable, how to make sure that we have control in our experiments to compare a new, say a new drug to an existing drug, those kind of things we talked about. Now the question is after we collect all this information, We've analyzed the information. How do we communicate to the to your people who wants to listen or who wants to get an idea of what our research investigation reveals? So we have to communicate the results in a professional way. And here I go. interpreting and communicating the results of. So statistical studies are conducted to answer questions such as if I want to find out what is the mean age of the population of all students at an university, we cannot, uh, you know, talk to everybody, every member of the population. So what will we do is select a simple random sample from the population of interest and work with that uh, members of the simple random simple a sample from them, I get a sample mean age and make an educated guess about the population mean age. Now, observational studies, as you remember, I'm sure you remember, are where we are not manipulating or changing any of the factors or any of the variables. We are just observing. So we have to think about what is the population of interest? What is the sample population? Are these two populations the same? If the sample population is only a subset of the population of interest, under coverage limits the ability to generalize. Over coverage results when sample population is actually larger than the population. So there are two things we have to worry about, okay? Uh, if the sample population is subset, so here we get under coverage because we are not considering the entire population. We are containing, uh, we are considering as our population a subset or part of the big population. Since we are not representing in our subset the entire population, we have under coverage. The opposite end of it is over, uh, over coverage. When the sample population is greater in number than the actual <coughs> population, excuse me. How were the individuals or sub objects in the sample actually selected? A description of the sampling method helps the reader to make judgments about whether the sample can reasonably be viewed as a representative of the population of interest. So we have to discuss in details as we uh, expose or as we discuss the results, how we had selected the sample from the population. Was the sample a part of the population? Is the sample, was the sample a representative sample from the population? Did we randomly select the sample? Is it a sample of, uh, you know, uh, convenience? Sample of convenience is not good. We should think about selecting a simple random sample. For that, we need to construct, have a sampling frame that is a listing of all members of the population from which using an algorithm we select a simple random sample from the list of the entire members of the population. What are the potential sources of bias? As we discussed before, as you remember, bias is the result we get is weighed in one direction or not. Okay, bias can happen if our sample is not randomly selected, if it is a sample of convenience. And is it likely that any of these will have a substantial effect on observed results? 
when describing an observational study, you should acknowledge that you are aware of the potential sources of bias and explain any steps that were taken to minimize their effect. Uh, remember, we talked about uh, time of the day, confounding variable that can confound the result. So if you have two groups taking a test under uh, different conditions, same test under different conditions in two different rooms at two different temperatures, but at uh, two times of the day, then time becomes a confounding variable which can confound, which can confound our results, which can also bi bias our results. So we have to remove or be uh, cognizant of the fact that there is a variable which can bias our results. In this case, time of the day. To remove that, we should conduct the test in two different rooms and the two different room uh, temperatures at the same time of the day. For experiments, some of the issues that should be addressed are what is the random assignment, role of random assignments. That means we should re randomly assign the participants in two different groups. Remember, we discussed that at length when we were doing comparing a new drug with a control. And the volunteers who are participating in the study should be randomly, without any preference, assigned to the two groups. Clearly articulate its role in experimental design, assigning subjects, which I just discussed, that is volunteers in two different groups, treatments or trials randomly ensures robust and unbiased results. That means we do not follow an order in assigning the subjects. In this case, the patients or the volunteers who are participating in the study, in the, we should not follow an order. We should randomly assign the volunteers in the two groups, the participants in the two groups. One group is takes the actual medicine, the other group takes the control or a placebo. Were any extraneous variables directly controlling hold uh, directly controlled by holding them at fixed values throughout the experiment? If so, which ones and at which values? Now here we are uh, discussing, I just mentioned this to you, extraneous variable like the time of the day, okay? That can affect the results. It can confound the results. So it should be removed. It should be held constant. That is the two rooms where we are testing the effect of temperature, room temperature on the student performance in the test the time of the day in the two different rooms where the test is conducted should be the same. Confounding variable, extraneous variable, which is temp, uh, time of the day should be kept same. It should not be different in the two different groups. In that way, we remove the effect of time of the day on the exam performance. Blocking, we talked about blocking. What is a block? Just to remind you, block maybe inside a group, inside a testing group. For example, we want to test a new readings uh, method of uh, or method of teaching reading to uh, children, method of new method of re reading skill development to children in the school where the grades are from one through four. We divide the students into blocks each block is the grade they are in, grade one, grade two, grade three, grade four. That is in our sample. We should not mix up the blocks. Why? Because if we mix up students from grade one with students from grade four, the results will be biased or confused because students at grade four have a higher reading skills. So we will not be able to find out clearly whether the new method of reading skills that we are teaching to the students is any good because we have grade one mixed with grade four, grade fours have a higher reading skill. In order to remove this variability, we should divide initially the selected sample of students into grades or blocks, grade one, grade two, grade three, grade four. Okay, block one, block two, block three, block four. Then in each block, we will try the two different methods of teaching reading skills, existing method and the new method. That way, because we have developed the blocks initially, we will be able to clearly find out whether the new method of teaching reading skills is any good or not. Now you may be questioning, is that 
all in communicating the results. They are saying that when we communicate the final results of our study to our audience who is interested in learning about this study, we should clearly mention what steps we have taken to, to reduce the sources of error. What steps we have taken to reduce the sources of error. That is the whole idea. So what is coming up next? Next, we are going to talk about how to, uh, no, how to make sure that the sources of error have been removed and that is clearly communicated to our audiences. A word to the wise, cautions and limitations. Uh, starting data collection without clear research ob objectives and the well-designed plan is a mistake. So we should have an objective. Remember, I started by saying that the college has hired me to find out what is the population mean age. I cannot reach the entire population. It's too large. I do not have the time. I do not have the money to conduct a research among the entire population. So I will select a simple random sample from the population. Okay. So our objective is to find out the population mean age. In order to do that, we will work with a simple random sample, find the sample mean age, and then we can make an educated guess about the population mean age. So here uh, they're uh, suggesting some things that we should ab avoid while doing the research. Drawing a cause and effect conclusion from an observational study. No, no, you cannot do that because you have not controlled any of the variables or factors. So we do not know for sure whether one factor or one variable causes the other to change. Cause and effect conclusions should not be, do should not be drawn. Generalizing results of an experiment that uses volunteers as subjects to a large population. This is not sensible without a convincing argument that the group volunteers can reasonably be considered to be representative of the population. So if we want to generalize the results from a study in which only volunteers participated to a big population is only uh, is only achievable if we make sure that we can justify why we ask volunteers to participate in our test. Maybe we have volunteers participating in our study because we are testing a new drug and these people who are participating in the study, experimental medicine and existing medicine, we're comparing. We selected these volunteers because maybe they have the uh, disease of interest which the new medicine is supposed to cure. So we should justify why we worked with volunteers in our experimental study. And generalizing findings from a sample to a population is valid when the sam sample is randomly chosen and free of bias. That is why I'm telling again and again, select a simple random sample from the population without showing any preference or liking for any particular group of people in the population. And how do you do that? You have a sampling frame, which is a listing of all members of the population. Then you ask a computer program to generate a list of random numbers. The numbers that come in the, from the output is are the people with those numbers that will be selected from the population with those numbers. Generalizing conclusion based on an observational study that used a voluntary response or convenient sampling to a larger population. This is almost never reasonable. So a voluntary response sample without proper justification, the results should not be extrapolated to the population because well, it's a voluntary response sample or an observational study for that matter. We just observed in this case, we did not control any variable. So we should not generalize from the small sample to the population because we did not control any of the factors or variables. It's an observational study. It is not an experimental study. So that's the end of it. I am sure you got the idea. If you still have questions, please do not hesitate to write me a small note. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Please give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Also in your comments, please let me know where you are watching from. And please let me know how else can I help you. Okay, I appreciate that. And if you like this video, share with your friends. You and your friends, please subscribe to my channel. 
by hitting the red subscribe button at the bottom right corner that is over here, bottom right corner. And please at the same time, do not forget to click on the bell button, which will remind you every time I upload a new video, which I try to do quite often, okay? And I appreciate the fact that you took time from your busy life to watch this video, okay? So please uh, let your friends know about it and please subscribe to my channel. I appreciate that. Please give me a thumbs up. That really motivates me to produce more videos. And I hope to see you tomorrow with another new video. Take care. Definitely take care. Have a nice day. See you next time.